Jerry the Snake Man. I welcome you today to uh, another episode of Snake Clips. Today we're going to be talking about uh, venomous snake handling and doing it safely. Uh, every once in a while, everybody uh, from Viper Keeper, me, um, anybody who puts videos out there on YouTube or other social medias, they get a little slack about uh, you know handling. You're not handling the, the snakes safely. You're a nut. You're crazy. Uh, I just want to tell you that there is no uh, industry standards for handling venomous snakes. Um, just because I handle them one way, somebody else handles them a different way, doesn't make either way right or wrong. It's basically what it works for you. Um, unfortunately, I've seen Viper Keeper being bashed on one of the forums about how he handles his snakes. Um, if I agree with how he does it or I don't agree with how he does it, uh, the man knows what he's doing. He's been doing it for a long time um, and it works for him and he even says what I do don't necessarily you do and that's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, I have my own method of handling venomous snakes. We've been doing this now for almost 35 years and um, we have a, a really great safety record as far as handling them. I have my own style. Um, I know uh, some people like Steve Irwin, um, he went out into the wild, he handled a lot of snakes, he never had a snake stick or any kind of professional handling uh, equipment. Um, he used to use branches and bushes and everything else to handle the snakes. Uh, did I agree with the way he handled them? Probably not. Um, but again, that was his style. He didn't get bit um, and, and he again would tell people, you know, don't handle them the way I handle them. Uh, well, what I want to say is basically, unless you get a mentor, unless you get somebody to teach you how to handle venomous snakes, you shouldn't be handling them at all anyway, okay? It's not something that you should just jump into. It's not something you need a disclaimer at the beginning of the videos, don't do what I do. I mean, you shouldn't be doing what I do anyway unless you're trained, unless you're a professional to do it. Um, so, you know, it, uh, the way I was always raised is, look, if you don't have nothing nice to say, then don't say nothing at all. I mean, don't be bashing and all these people who are out there putting out these videos for you, for your entertainment, for your education. Um, we don't get paid to put out these videos. We do it because we like to share what is our passion with you, and we hope you enjoy what we do and we uh, and watching, but we're not encouraging you to do handle snakes the way we handle them okay so you know again I think a lot of people who do put out these negative comments about the videos and stuff like that they just like to hear themselves talk or type whatever you want to call it they like to read their nasty comments you know because somebody else does it a different way and you're not doing it right well personally I don't really care but I don't like it when people are being bashed um, for doing what they do the way they do it. It's their style um, and you know most of the people who are even doing the bashing don't even handle venom the snakes. They're not even involved with them. So again if you don't have nothing nice to say really don't say nothing at all. I mean it's not right. Like it says we're doing this out of the goodness of our hearts. We're not getting paid to make these videos. Um, we do it because we want to share our passion with you. We want to share our love of snakes with you. Um, so we're going to today we're going to do this video and this video is called, called handling venom the snakes safely and what I'm going to do is today just happens to be a feeding day um, for some of the venom the snakes so I'm going to show you how I handle them um, what safety equipment that I choose to use and why I choose to do um, handle the snakes the way I handle them so I'll kind of explain why to me what I'm doing is not unsafe um, but there's always a risk. There's never anything you're ever going to do with venomous snakes that is not going to be a risk. Um, it, it's you're, you're dealing with an animal. Um, I personally have never had any of my venomous snakes ever fall to the floor. I've never had to deal with them that way. Um, I've watched a lot of videos where the people have had the snake go to the floor um, and they had to deal with the snake on the floor. Um, that's not something that's ever happened to me. Um, because of the way I, I choose to handle my snakes. So hopefully you'll enjoy this video clip today. You'll watch it um, again. Um, nobody, no matter what video you're watching of anything, um, do we encourage you to do what we do. Okay, so please stay tuned. Hope you like this. And if you do like this, um, like us on YouTube. 
I, I just ask you to do that just so I can uh, kind of get like a uh, some kind of a, like a little bit of a survey there on if the people are liking what we do or they're not liking what we do um, uh, from what I get the feedback most of you guys like what I do uh, my subscribers are going up a little bit uh, you guys are spending a lot more time watching our videos so um, like I said hopefully you like what we're doing what we're showing you um, your comments are always welcomed on any of our videos uh, you can leave comments on YouTube and if for any reason because I've been told some of them I've disabled some of the comment sections on my videos um, I haven't done that I mean that's kind of really giving me a lot more credit than I'm because I don't even know how to do that um, but if they are disabled, you're more than welcome to go to my website and leave a comment on my website about any of the video clips that we do. If you have any suggestions, anything you want to see, you can also leave us a comment and tell me what you want to see. All right, I, I've had a few people emailing me telling me they'd like to see me putting out more videos. Um, like I said, I'm trying to make as many as I possibly can, but um, you guys have made our live performances, our live shows a lot more popular, so we don't have as much time as we used to to put out these videos. We do slow down a little bit in the wintertime, so at that point, um, I'll try to put out even more video clips as, as I possibly can. So right now, I'm trying to make at least one a month, one video clip a month, uh, but if I can't do it, guys, just hang in there. I'm, I'm going to keep making video clips until you guys tell me that I stink and you don't want to see anymore. Um, so hopefully, like I said, hopefully you enjoy this video clip and I thank you for watching. Okay, right now I'm going to be moving this Cobra into a new tank. This is one of the styles uh, that I have to do to lock up my tanks uh, that I came up with. It's actually a plain tank with a screen lid top. I use ratchet straps. I drill a hole through the handle and through the strap so I can put a lock on. I've just already unlocked this lock though. Um, this way you can't get them off. But I like the critter tanks better. They have a, they're already set up for a lock to be put on, on right on the lid there. So I like those better and I got another critter tank so I'm going to be um, getting rid of this here. So basically what I do is with the Cobras, again I like to use top uh, access instead of front door access. I don't like dealing with snakes on their own level. I like dealing with them from above. Um, with this Cobra here, um, again, I've said in many of the videos, my hides have holes drilled in the top so I can use a uh, forceps to pick it up without having to reach down and pick it up from the hole. So let me grab my forceps over here. And as soon as I do this, he's going to get extremely upset. He's going to fly out of here hissing. I have my Hex Armor gloves, which is the highest rated needle stick gloves you're going to find. They're rated at a 5. Um, so a fang shouldn't be able to penetrate it, but nothing is ever 100% guaranteed. But I use these gloves this way if the snake were to come flying out of here before I'm ready for him. he wouldn't be able to bite me. So as you see here, he's very hissy, he's very upset. All right, so right now what I'm gonna do is Cobra strike in a downward motion. They typically don't strike up. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook him, I'm gonna hold him with one hand, and I'm gonna move up quick onto the below his hood here with the other hand. Once I have him below the hood, generally they do not try to turn around and bite at you. They try to move forward. Um, normally, he's going to try to escape. As you can see, he's fighting me. So what I'm going to do now is with my stick, I'm going to hook him and grab his tail. All right, now at which point I'm going to slowly bring him back, get up under his hood here, just like that, and as you see, he's starting to settle down, and I'm going to put him in a temporary holding enclosure. Okay, now I'm going to take him out of a temporary holding enclosure that he's in. Um, he's a little bit active right now, so what I'm going to do basically is 
Um, he's going to want to come up and out. I'm going to use my gloves as a shield. Um, again, it's hard for them to bite on any flat surface, so if I hold my hand like this, he's really not able to bite. Um, I'm going to use my stick as well if I need to. What I do is I open the enclosure up. He's right up here looking to get out. So I open the enclosure up, pulling it, the lid toward me as a shield until I see him. And now he's right there. Now at this point with the gloves on, I'm able to grab him, catch him, or do whatever what I have to. Dealing with a live animal, you never know what they're going to do. But again, I'm going to try the same method, which is to reach down here and hook him. Get part of his body up in the air. And then quickly maneuver my other hand underneath him here. And as you can see, once he's up and out, he basically has, uh, feels a little more confident. He's not feeling as threatened as he was in the enclosure, and he's not trying to attack me. So that's why I usually handle him this way. Now I'm going to put him into his new enclosure. Let him climb right down in there. And again, as he tries to fly up, I can put my hand over with the gloves on. Close this up. And then the most important thing is, like I said, why I like these new cages, is there's a place right here for the lock to go. And he's locked right in there. Now the next snake I'm taking out is my mangrove snake. Um, they're rear fang venomous. A lot of people don't consider them venomous. Um, I do. But the um, reason why you're going to see me basically handling her barehanded is because I know my snake. Um, it's during the daytime. It's uh, early in the morning. It's around 10 o'clock right now. She is a very nocturnal type of snake. When she is resting like she is right now. She is extremely laid back, non-aggressive whatsoever. So for her, basically all I'm going to do, as you can see, I can reach and I can touch her. I'll just reach in here, grab her behind her head, pick up the rest of her body. As you can see, she's not trying to attack me or anything. If I were to try to do what I just did at night, um, she would take my head off. So at nighttime, if I have to deal with her, I will obviously put on my gloves, but during the daytime, I can just pick her up. Um, she's very non-aggressive, but I still do restrain her slightly. Um, again, she's a rear fang. Uh, I know some people have got bit. They had really no effects from her, but I still consider her venomous. I see right there, she's waking up a little bit now. So now when I go to take her back out of the holding enclosure, when I'm done with her, I'm going to have to wear my gloves because she is starting to wake up. And when she's awake, she's a witch with a bee. All right, this is my southern copperhead. And I wear one of my gloves when I handle him. I've had him since he was a baby. Um, so what I will do with him is I'll basically reach in with my snake stick and I'll reverse what I call kind of like reverse tailing him. I'll grab him more with this hand toward the head. I'll support the back of his body with the stick here and I will pick him up and he feels very secure this way. He's not looking to bite or try to attack me as you can see and it makes him feel more secure and I feel very secure holding him in that manner. Um, because with the glove on, he's again, he's most likely not going to strike at me. Um, uh, when I'm wearing the glove, it hides my heat signature, but also I know my snakes. So when I'm handling snakes, I know I know their attitude. But again, you can always get one on a bad day that wants to bite, so you always want to have protection. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, as you can see right here, there's some poop in this tank. And again, on one of the forums, a uh, gentleman, it wasn't me, but I mean, I got poop in my tanks also, actually. But a uh, gentleman uh, was being, you know, picked on. Uh, they said, oh, look, he, poor husbandry has poop in the tank. Well, let me tell you what. Snakes are live animals, and they poop. And you are going to have poop in the tank. And a lot of times when I'm taking the snakes out of my tank, like right now, um, one of the reasons I'm taking them out is to feed them and to clean up their tank. 
okay so just because there's poop in a gentleman's tank does not mean that he uh, has poor husbandry skills and that he doesn't take good care of his snakes matter of fact the gentleman they were picking on um, he does take quite good care of his snakes but it seems like after you clean a tank that's when the snake will go right back in and poop in the tank so um you know don't judge people on stuff that you really don't know um you know like i said if a tank's got poop in it it's like oh look at that it's a terrible guy well a live animals enclosure is going to have poop in it every once in a while um so you know what again enjoy the videos for what they're worth um you know don't bad mouth the guys that are making them for you uh, just enjoy what they're trying to share with you Okay, this is my small cotton mouth, and uh, a cotton mouth, he likes to, I've had him again since he was a little bitty baby, and he's under his hide right now, so I'll use my forceps here to pick his hide off of him. And he's right here. Now, he actually likes to ride the stick. So what I do is I still have my glove on my one hand, just in case I need to. But generally, I'll just pick him up. He'll ride the stick very nicely. And I'll put him over here into his holding container. And basically, I like to try to move the snakes around in the less stressful way as possible. Um, some of them, they'll ride the stick, so I don't have to worry about it. Others are what I call like reverse tail because they prefer for me to be supporting the front of their body and I'll use the stick to support the back of their body. Um, whenever I tail tail, uh, especially like my Western Diamondback rattlesnakes, uh, they have a tendency to want to strike at me. But when I use my method of picking them up, um, they normally don't strike at me. So again, I think my method is a lot less stressful to them and just because they're venomous snakes doesn't make them any more aggressive or defensive than any other snake. Um, it's just obvious that you have to be more careful because you don't want to get bit. Okay, now this is my female cotton mouth and she is super aggressive or defensive, however you want to say it. So, what I do here is, I didn't drill any holes there, so I'll just hook over underneath the opening of my little hide for her. As you can see, she's got her head up, she's ready to go, which is typical for her. And she too will normally ride the stick pretty good, so all I do is basically look to get her hooked, kind of center of the body, pick her up. As you can see, she'll stay right on there. And I'll simply move her over and drop her down into our holding container. All right, so you saw there, I was handling a couple of my venomous snakes. Uh, first one was a cobra. Again, uh, wearing the hex armor gloves are not 100% guaranteed, but they are the highest rated needle stick gloves you can buy. Um, I have had them bit on quite a few times without anything, any teeth going through. From everything from large, uh, large uh, reticulated pythons to uh, even a cobra that was chewing on it. Uh, so I, I do trust them. They are a secondary precaution though. Um, basically, as you can see, I like to hold my animals. That makes them feel more secure uh, and more relaxed. As you saw with the Cobra, when I took him out, uh, when I first encountered him, he was all flared up, huffy and puffy. But once I actually get my hands on him and I pick him up, he flares down and he stops trying to bite at me. Unless, like at my shows, I'll tease him a little bit so he'll flare back up again while I'm holding him. Uh, the copperhead, again, I've had that snake since it was a little bitty baby, so it is used to me, but I do hold it. I do like a reverse tailing, which is when I hook it, I will run my hand up toward the front of the snake um, and hold more toward the head. The snake then support the body uh, with either my other hand, which is also gloved, or with a stick 
Um, this makes the snake feel secure, like you're not going to drop him. And then the two uh, cotton mouse or water moccasins, um, I did put the gloves on just in case they were to strike, at least on my left hand. But as you can see, both of them, they will stick very easily. You can hook them, they'll stay on a stick. So instead of having to actually interact with them a little bit more by physically handling them, um, I just hook them, I pick them up, and I move them over into their temporary enclosure while I take care of them. This way, it less is less stressful on them. Again, the way I do things, I've done them for over 35 years, I've got a great safety record, um, it's just the way I do them. Um, it works for me, I try to do things that cause less stress on the animal and less stress on me and we're both happy. So please, when you watch people handling snakes, uh, yes, there are a lot of people, um, I will agree, that aren't professionals, um, that are handling snakes in a very, very dangerous way, like free handling a venomous snake with no gloves on or not a stick or anything else, just reaching down, picking them up, holding them in your bare hands, letting them crawl around. It's extremely, extremely dangerous. Do I think that's an acceptable practice to do? No, I do not. But there are people who do things that I don't agree with, but I don't say they're wrong because it works for them. As long as it works for them, that's all that matters. If they don't get bit and they have a long career, um, then I would say that their way is just as acceptable as my way. All right, so I hope you did enjoy this video. And again, if you did, like us on YouTube. Um, let us know what you want to see, and we'll try to get it out there for you. Have a good day, guys.